So let's talk about correlation coefficient. So in this video, we're going to determine whether there is a relationship or a relationship exists between two quantitative variables. So the correlation is a relationship between two variables. So the data can be represented by the ordered pairs x, y, where x is the independent variable, or these are the variables that are being manipulated, and y is the dependent variables, or these are the data that are being measured. So the scatter plot displays the strength, direction, and form of the relationship between two quantitative variables. So this is scatter plot shows a negative linear correlation. So as the x increases, y tends to decrease. The independent variable and the dependent variable here are inversely proportional. So this scatter plot shows a positive linear correlation. So as x increases, y tends to, to increase. And this scatter plot shows no correlation. You cannot see any direction whether the dots are going positive or going to negative. So if your data looks like this, so meaning it has no correlation, but the two variables has no significant relationship. Now, the correlation coefficient is a measure of the strength and the direction of a linear relationship between two variables. And the R is given by this equation, where N is the number of pairs of data. Now, the range of the correlation is from negative 1 to positive 1. So when the computed R is negative 1, meaning it has a perfect negative correlation between negative 1 and negative 0.5, it has a strong negative correlation. Between negative 0.5 to 0, it has weak negative correlation. If that is 0, it has no correlation. Between 0 to positive 0.5, it has weak positive correlation. Between 0.5 to positive 1, it has a strong positive correlation. And if the computed R is positive 1, it has a perfect positive correlation. Now, let's have this example number 1. A marketing department wishes to determine whether there is a relationship between the number of television commercials aired per week and the number of sales in 1,000 pesos of a product. So the data are as follows. So let's get started. So again, this is the formula for our R. So we need to have a column for x squared, y squared, and x, y in our table. And we're going to find their summations. Have now the x squared. So to find the x squared, or we're just going to square the data under x. So this is now 2 squared will be 4. 5 squared is 25. X, 8 squared is 64. 10 squared is 100, 12 squared is 144. Now in the formula, we need the summation of x squared. So we're just going to add this. So 4 plus 25 plus 64 plus 100 plus 144. Now to find the y squared, we're just going to square the data under y. So we have 4, uh, I mean 2 squared is equal to 4. 4 squared is 16, 6 squared is 36. 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100. So in the formula, we need the summation of y squared. So we're just going to add this. Adding this, this is equal to 237. Now, the x and the y, so x times y, we're just going to multiply the data under x and under y. So 2 times 2, this will be 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 8 times 6 will be 48. 10 times 9 is 90. 12 times 10 is 120. And we need the summation of also of this, x, y in the formula. So we're just going to add this, and this is equal to 282. Now, we also need the summation of x and y. So we need to add the x, so this is equal to 37. We need to add the data under y, so this is equal to 31. Now, since we have completed, we have now the summations of our x, y, x squared, y squared, and x, y. So let us substitute this now in our formula. So R is equal now to N, N is 5. So we have 5 pairs of data, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the X and Y. The summation of X, Y is 282 minus the summation of X, which is 37, times the summation of Y, which is 31, over the square root of N, which is 5, times the summation of X squared is 337, minus the summation of x quantity squared. So that is the summation of x squared. So that is 37 squared. 
times the square root of n, that is 5, times the summation of y squared, which is 237, minus the summation of y, quantity squared. So that is the summation of y, which is 31 squared. So that is minus 31 squared. Now let us simplify this. So we have 5 times 282 is equal to 1,410. 37 times 31 is 1,147. 5 times 337 is 1,685. 37 is squared is 1,369. Then 5 times 237 is 1,185. 31 times 31 is 961. Now let us simplify this further. We're going to subtract this. This is equal to 263. Subtract this. This is equal to 216. I mean 316. Subtract this. This is equal to 224. Now we have now 263 divided by the square root of 316 times the square root of 224. And this is approximately equal to 0 0.99. So round off your answers to two decimal places. Now 0 0.99. This suggests a strong positive linear correlation. So it means that the amount of advertisements aired is related to the number of sales. Okay, so let's proceed to linear regression. So after verifying that the linear correlations between two variables exist, the next step is to determine the equation of the line that best models the data. Now, the regression is a statistical approach for determining the best line fitting straight line for a collection of data, and the resulting straight line is referred to as the regression line. So this is the regression line. Now, the equation of regression line is given by this, that is y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Now, the equation for m is given by this, and the equation of, for b is given by this. Okay, so let's have our previous example. Okay, so we have just identified or we just, we just have verified that this has an R of equal to 0 0.99 and this suggests a strong positive correlation. And the advertisement, it means that the advertisement A is related to the number of sales. So now since the sales and the number of ads has a significant relationship, now we're going to find the equation of the line that best models the data, okay? So again, the equation for the regression line is equal to mx plus b, and this is the equation for b, and this is the equation for the slope. So this is the table from our previous example. Now let's find m. So let us now solve for m. So m is equal now to n, which is 5, times the summation of xy, which is 262, minus the summation of x, which is 37, times the summation of y, which is 31, over n is 5, times the summation of x squared, which is 337, minus the summation of x quantity squared. So that is the summation of x, which is 37 is squared. So that is 37 squared. Now let us simplify this. We have 5 times 262 will be 1,410. 37 times 31, 5 times 337 is 1,685. And 37 squared is 1,369. Now subtract this. We have now 263. Subtract this, that is equal to 316. Now 263 divided by 316, this is approximately equal to 0 0.83. So meaning the slope is equal to 0 0.83. Our M is equal to 0 0.83. Now, let's compute the y-intercept. So this is the equation for the y-intercept. So let us substitute now. The summation of y is equal to 31. So summation of y is equal to 31 over n is 5 minus M that we have computed is 0.83 times the summation of x, which is 37, over n, which is 5. Now, let us simplify. We have 31 divided by 5 is 6.2 minus 0.83 times 37 divided by 5 is 7.4. Now, multiply this and subtract the product from 6.2. So, the answer is equal to 0 0.058. 
approximately in two decimal places, this is equal to 0 0.06. So our y-intercept is equal to 0 0.06. And our M is equal to 0 0.83. So we're just going to substitute the value of B and M in the equation of the regression line Y equals MX plus B. So the equation of regression line now is equal to 0 0.83X plus 0 0.06. Now this equation, the equation of regression line can be used to predict the value of Y for a given value of X. So suppose we are asked to find how much will be the sales for the 15 number of ads per week? So given, so using the equation of regression line that we have, y equals 0.83x plus 0.06, we're just going to substitute this 15 to the variable x. So this becomes 0.83 times 15 plus 0.06. So simplifying this, this is equal to 12.51. So it means the possible sales when there are 15 ads per week aired is 12.51 in thousand pesos. Thank you.